Hello everybody, Bryos here. So my real life has been really busy recently with me focusing on work and you know trying to earn a living and because of that I have not been playing much or haven't had much time to get footage for a video for you guys. But I hope you guys understand because real life and bills come first so I gotta make a living to pay those bills. And that isn't so bad actually because recently the March 2021 patch screwed up everything and with the clan ERPPCs being bugged, firing and doing 19.2 damage per shot that's just insane it's like a long range ac20 and because of that everybody's been spamming erppcs clan erppcs uh specifically uh, like veagles warhawks they're just everywhere and it's honestly kind of got them irritating and yeah that kind of sucks but good news is boys and girls we are going to have a patch rollback on 20th of april and that date will also see the quadrant changes coming in. And what are the quadrant changes? Well, the quadrant are a group of people who came together to discuss changes and debate over weapon and other balances. And on April 20th, the changes will come in live. There's no time for PTS, so it will go live. And if you're wondering about the changes, all the changes can be seen in the website. The link is in the description below. And they make a lot of sense. For long-time players, it makes great, great sense. You'll see the clan small pulse lasers going back up from 4 to 5 damage, but with a cooldown nerf, so it's a bit more balanced. Uh, Gauss rifles having more range, better velocity for a few other things, basically a whole bunch of changes and most of the community is really excited for it. And that's why you do, do community changes based on community feedback and of course the community will be happy. Don't do the March 21 patch PGI, that was a bad unilateral decision. So anyway, with that aside, let me share with you this particular build that I have been playing recently, granted not that much due to real life work. And this by the way is the Hellspawn hero, the Paralyzer. In the game is the Hellspawn 7D2. And it's an interesting Hellspawn because Hellspawns are really heavily armoured on the left side. This guy has a plus 18 armour for the left torso and 0 for the right torso, just a bit of structure. So that's kind of weird Hellspawns, they have janky hitboxes. But honestly Hellspawns are very mobile, they're pretty interesting hard points and they can do well actually. Um, it's just a bit weird to play because you can take so much damage from the left but so little from the right. And yeah, so that makes it a challenge. And this particular guy here, the Hellspawn hero, the Paralyzer, has a ECM, so that makes it pretty interesting. So let's take a look at the build. So this is a variation of one of the common builds you see. Quite often you see people run 6 medium pulse lasers on the Paralyzer and that's actually pretty darn decent. But I thought I'd share with you a cooler build that does pretty okay actually. And that's basically a 4 medium pulse build with 2 ER smalls in the left arm. ER smalls and medium pulse lasers kind of sink in cooldown. So close enough anyway. So they sync kind of nicely and with the heat reduction from ER smalls versus medium pulse, you can have less heat and of course more tannish for other things. A TCOM Mark 1 increases the range which is always useful. Guide an ECM and with an XL300 engine with speed tweak, you move at a speed of about 113. Interestingly enough, this build has 50 thin double heat sinks, so it can fire quite a lot without shutting down. Good sustained DPS for this build. And yeah, that's it. So if it, as I mentioned, the left torso has more armor. So in this particular build, the left torso has 58 in the front, of course front loaded with only 4 in the rear, for obvious reasons, and the right torso only has 40. So whenever possible, present your left side to the enemy to soak that damage. And as for skills, in a typical laser vomit build, you are going to get as much heat gen as possible and the good thing about medium pulse lasers, you don't need the laser duration. And even though I have ER smalls, it's well only two small little lasers, I'm not going to spend so many notes on that. So with this combination, I get a heat reduction of 10.5%. I'm also going for ma as much range as possible, so a 12% range boost allows us to engage at a longer range. Cooldown reduction of 6.75 makes it fire faster and that's not too bad actually. Zero on survival because this is a build relying on speed, 16 SP so mobility to make it even more mobile and with speed, 3 nodes of speed tweak, it's able to reach that 113 speed. 3 nodes of jump jets to get the 2 nodes of heat shielding, redu uh, reducing the heat by 12% when you jump and that's actually pretty useful for very mobile jump capable builds. And I've been doing this quite recently because yep, I play a lot of jumpy jumpy shooty shooty things. And yet again, 20 SPs for maximum heat dissipation and heat capacity for operations. So 5 nodes of cool run for 10% heat dissipation bonus and a 15% heat capacity boost with heat containment nodes. And because of the ECM, I'm going for one enhanced ECM systems on the left side that, well, 
increases the range of the ASM just a bit, which is always useful. Um, didn't have enough for the other note. And for 10 SPs in auxiliary, I'm going for my two strikes and two cool shots. And some people have been complaining about strikes because they do way too much damage, and that is true. So one of the quadrant changes is actually to modify the strikes. So even though I have two strikes, in the quadrant changes come 20th of April, these strikes will do less damage from 15 damage per shot to 5 damage in the changes, which is good because honestly, strikes do too much damage. But there will be an increase in duration, so the strikes come in, they last longer, suppressing the enemy longer, which is one of the reasons I use artillery strikes, but doing less damage. So you won't insta-kill light max, which is honestly kinda irritating. So that's it guys, that's the Hell Spawn Paralyzer, 4 medium pulse, 2 ERs mobile, very mobile, pokey pokey, laser vomit build. And once the quadrant changes come in, that will be pretty exciting for content creators like me, because we get to explore new builds and come up with things for you guys. So anyway, let's get down to the combat and I'll show you that this build isn't too bad actually. So let's go. So here we are on River City for the first showcase match. And one of the things you could do with a fast medium like this Hellspawn, even though 113 isn't ridiculously fast, one of the things you could do is actually check out the flanks. Move from flank to flank, look for enemy movement by scouting and relaying it back to the team. Not only that, sometimes the enemy fast movers try to, tries to flank your main force, harass your team or be spotters for enemy lerms and that's always a pain in the ass. And that's what I'm doing right now, moving from one flank to the other. And right now I'm going to support this huntsman here who is engaging some targets. And he's all alone. So let's move in to support this guy here. Salted, I'm with you. So it looks like an ECM medium, probably a Shadowhawk. Yeah, it's a Shadowhawk too. Only 5 medium pulse lasers. Interesting. It can mount 6, that's a pretty good deal also. So moving in synchronization with the huntsman. As he engages, I move to the other side, so kind of not getting too much aggro. Trying to flank this Phoenix up. He makes a break for it. His left torso is already open from the rear. And yeah, just shielding a bit from left to right, spreading the damage. Echo's on the run. He knows he can't fight two of us, and he is alone. So I'm gonna try... Oh, he's coming back. So that's a suicidal move by him. So let's finish him off. Always take note of which components are caught. His left torso, left arm and right leg. So I'm going to focus on his torso. And yep, Kobe gets him with machine guns. But right now, Alpha Lance, the three of us here, are pretty out of position. Good thing is we have speed. So once you do this, don't start an Ascar. Return back to the team. Hopefully hitting them from the flanks. Juliet, left torso, awesome. Juliet looks like a good C target there. There he is. Managed to drop a strike on him. So the enemy is kind of strung out at the moment. So few assault. Bravo, Golf 6, right torso, Warhawk. Few assault tier like that, Warhawk. Gonna move in. PPC Gauss build, interesting. Golf 6, there's a Warhawk in the water. So calling out the Warhawk so everybody can focus fire. Bravo. Yeah, his torsos are hurt. Left torso open now. Left torsos open, bravo. Push it. You can see the mobility of this build is pretty sweet. After I fire, I can reverse and jump away. Lots of hit and run. Second strike goes down. That Warhawk is caught bad. Oh, but somebody blocks him. So taking quite a bit of damage. Could a few fast movers go to Golf 5, Hotel 5, please? Going wide so that the big guys push Golf 6. So that the heavies behind me could move up. Kobe, you and I. Oh, that was, that was a sad waste of armor on my side. Trying to support this guy here, but yeah, I don't think he needs support. Oof. Kind of disorientated there. Took a bit too much damage. This is what happens when you overextend. I'll blame that light on my left. Stupid target piranha. Acquired. New target acquired. Target spotted. Target spotted. The are so there is a target somewhere here. There it is. It's the Tanatos, probably stealth. I'm gonna focus on his right torso. Oh, Kobe goes down. So just what me versus him. PPCs have minimum range. 
but I'm called on my wrecked torso. So gotta be really careful. Using the mobility, took off his wrecked torso. And it's time to run. <laughs> Too caught to fight. Making a break for it. 7-5, I'm not gonna throw my mech away. Game is close. Goal 5 is an assault. Hotel is in trouble. He doesn't see me, allowing me to get free oh, shots on his rear. Shooting is groin, which is a CT. Ah, goal 5. Yeah, after KMDD, me. that's nice. There's a real Oh, you don't say I just oh, called it out. <laughs> yeah, somebody called out a wall, which I've been shooting at for quite a bit. So, movement is life in this kind of build. So, keep moving. Only when you think you're safe, you can stop a bit to shoot. So, as you can see, the sustain fire on this build is pretty sweet. Yeah, the Tanatus is still alive. He was the one I caught and chopped off his wreck torso. There's no need to stay too long if you feel you're in a disadvantage. Yep, let's all push. So that's what I did at Riley, wait for I us. disengaged and now I go back. No, it's not, it's just dying. So it goes two PPC. So jumping over this Warhammer to get a nice angle. One more shot, can I get a kill? Oh, didn't. One more, one more, one more. Oh, that's yeah, got Polly. That was the Warhawk. The Thanatos already died. So anyway, that's a win for us. So living dangerously in this Hellspawn with my torso caught, some bad decisions were made then. 7 5 3 damage, 10 assists, 1 kill isn't so bad. Uh, yeah, so all those pulses doing quite a bit of damage for a match score of 5 3 5. So as the previous match showed, this Hellspawn has really good mobility actually, with good speed, well, kind of decent speed anyway, good jump capability, good mobility, XL, D cell, and a very decent torso twist speed. It plays the role of a skirmisher pretty nicely. Most people just avoid Hellspawns because they're pretty ugly, and the weird hitboxes, the heavily armored left and these no armor right, is, it's just weird to play, but I kind of like them. But another thing in this build which you see in this particular match is that the arm weapons, they have 4 energy hard points, they can shoot up and down pretty nicely with the lower arm actuators. So my 2 medium pulse lasers and 2 arrow smalls, with these combinations you can jump up and shoot downwards, which is always very decent. And in fact right now, we have some missiles firing, so there's probably a, a quick draw in front of me. So let's jump up and take a look. So true enough, it's an IV-4. It's always an IV-4. Waiting for him with arm lock off. Uh, that was a pretty bad trade. So I'm gonna pull back. Kind of alone here. Charlie is down low. Everybody's looking down, so enemy must be pushing below. Yep, he dropped the UAV. Charlie right torso, it's a Corsair. Try to call out core components, it helps the team. It's open. So this is not a good brawler, so I'm just going to reposition. Hit and run is what this mech does. One husband. What is this packet doing? Tries to sneak in. Yeah. <laughs> he ran away. So with my arm weapons, I'm going to aim downwards. This is a nice position, by the way. Yeah, look at that. Right torso squad. Going to try to pick it off. Kid vision for better visuals. Corsair coming up center. India, CT it. Oh, they have quite a few Corsairs as you can see. Charlie's right also open. Always check the paper dolls. Try to remember like India CT, Charlie right also. That's what I do. Allows me to remember what to shoot when I bump into them. Pressure the Corsairs please. So even though I can have good sustained fire, it's still generating lots of heat. Oh, their push is failing here. They're already 2 nailed down. They don't see me yet. Oh, Corsair sees me. Some wreck fire. India, CT. Also be aware of your team movement. Like a uh, friendly Cyclops is pushing. They are pushing top, guys. They have the top. Oh, why did we abandon the top? Wanted to push on top, but yep. Everybody ran away, so time to go down low. So this is a bad move by the team. Abandoning the top and pushing down low. So now they have the high ground, they can shoot down on us. 3-0 in terms of kills, but we are in a disadvantage in terms of positioning. Alpha left torso. Please don't stand behind my hell spawn, please. 
So slowly picking on bright side in his quick draw. One more shot. No, I missed the shot. Nah, no, I didn't get him. Still there. Oh, no, it wasn't me. KMDD though. 6-3. Push in, get golf, please. Left arm, golf. One more shot left arm. Quality shots has been moving. He's a stick now, golf. Cataphrag, Juliet. Red lining this mech. Very hot even with the heat sinks. So it's quite a bit of damage on my right torso. Like I said, it's a weird, weird mech in terms of hitboxes. Right torso is weak, but the left is really strong. Gotta remember that. Nice push. 9-3, it's a nice push. Yep, they should be above. Yep, there they are. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, that's a target down low. Something I can chase. Is that a spider? Yes, it is. Let's try to leg him. Right leg's open. Both legs now. Pinpoint damage from the pulses. Nice. And he gets killed by somebody else. Oh well. So this is a typical hell spawn situation. My right torso is open and cord, while my left torso is still pretty fresh. Like I said, many many times, weird hitboxes. So last two, they're kind of high up. Strike lens, just a bit of damage. I'm gonna jump on this building, swivel left and get ready to jump. And let's go. Ah, oh, they vanished. There he is, he's on the run. They ran off to Echo 6. And the chase is on to get the last two. Oh, missiles, damn it. So, even though I chased an Erby, here comes the Arctic Wolf. Missile Bill. CT, one more shot. Ah yes, finally a kill. Last one's the flea. Is he really an oh not it's not a flea, it's a Herbie. Left toss uh, left legs open. As my left side is way way more heavily armored and fresh. Constantly showing him my left side. Nicely done, thank you. So that's a win for this match. So that was a decent performance. Only one kill, but uh, with the right torso cord had to present my left side most of the last third of the game so 704 damage one kill uh, not that much but lots of, lots of harassing um with all the damage at short range that should give you a nice match score and there it is five five two